Welcome to Flourish, where we explore how to nurture, coach, and inspire the children we love at any age to let their genius blossom. I'm your host, Diane Planodin, and a very proud parent of an extremely gifted individual named Nicholas. In today's episode, we're going to discuss the importance of music and how music can really nurture a child and bring out their best. In a previous episode, I mentioned Nicholas's kindergarten teacher, Mrs. Sherry. She felt Nicholas needed more challenges to keep him interested in learning. As Mrs. Sherry was an expert piano player herself, and Nicholas really enjoyed her sing-along times in the classroom, we started with adding music lessons, specifically the piano. Turns out it was an excellent decision and for more than learning a musical instrument. But it wasn't an easy task. Inasmuch as Nicholas had begun showing a academic acumen, playing a musical instrument was not necessarily a natural gift. Absolute pitch, often called pitch perfect, is a talent that apparently only 1 in 10,000 people possess. That's a rough estimate, because apparently there's a lot of people out there that don't even know if they have the talent. To be pitch perfect, you possess the ability to sing or play any note on the spot, without any formal guiding note. Some classical composers, including Mozart, Chopin, and Beethoven, are have said to have had perfect pitch. Mariah Carey, Ella Fitzgerald, and Michael Jackson are excellent examples of the gift in modern music. Michael Jackson has actually a really wonderful inspirational quote I'm going to share with you quickly. Please go for your dreams, whatever your ideals, you can become whatever you want to become. There's also relative pitch, which is compared to being able to play by ear. The musician hears a note and understands the natural progression. Thankfully, it's something that can be nurtured versus being a natural, which seems to be a rare gift indeed. Nicholas started with the piano with the intention of expansion by trying other instruments as well. After all, it's tough to play a piano in a school band. (laughs) uh, Can you imagine a marching band with the piano? I'm, I'm really not sure how that would work. And his dream one day was to play the saxophone. And I will talk about that progression with different instruments in another episode. But for now, we're going to talk about the piano. Nicholas had to practice. And he had to practice on purpose. Learning to read music can be quite intense. His father was a bass guitar player, but was more melody driven versus chord driven. He played by ear and he still can to this day. We needed to develop a routine that would incorporate the discipline music requires, a schedule that would work not only for him, but for me as well. As a parent, I needed to schedule time to dedicate to my child, regardless of what he was interested in. I usually go to the hockey analogy when I talk about time and time management for your children because their schedules just seem to be so packed these days with everyone in a hurry going nowhere. I'm thankful Nicholas didn't want to be a hockey player. (laughs) I don't think I could have been a hockey mom. My job would have been tenfold. Having said that, The commitment of all those hockey moms and dads out there that take their child to practice anywhere from the wee early morning hour to the late evenings and weekends. Hockey, wow, that is a huge time commitment. Think about Canada's own Wayne Gretzky or Mario Lemieux. They both had parents that nurtured their children and understood the importance of practicing on purpose. Practice didn't end in the rink or depending on the coach's schedule. They built rinks in their yards and advocated for success. This goes back to my parenting principle that if you anticipate your child will succeed, 
you better be prepared to also put in the time. In the immortal words of Wayne Gretzky's dad, Walter, skate to where the puck is going, not to where it has been. That's a strong vision. And it's so relevant. It's so relevant that even Steve Jobs used to use that quote. So think about that in the big picture. Nicholas had many fantastic piano teachers over the years. After all, musicians need a coach too. He had a daily schedule of practice at home, and the only time he didn't practice was on piano lesson day. And holiday when a piano wasn't around. Otherwise, he would come home from school. He would have a mini break, maybe a piece of fruit or a small snack. And then about half an hour later, piano practice began together every day seven days a week every month every year he practiced and every single day I sat by Nicholas's side without interruption no phone calls no texting no nothing the two of us simply spent the time together which is just such precious time to spend as he sat and practiced on purpose. Because of Nicholas's devotion and dedication to learning the piano, I never wavered either. I never wavered in inspiring him every single day. He never wavered in his practice, which sometimes did need some extra encouragement. I'm not going to make things up here. <laughs> Some days he didn't feel like it, and some days we had to struggle through that. But he persevered. He succeeded, and we never really kept track officially of time. We never said, oh, well, you did 35 minutes yesterday, let's just do 25 today. In fact, sometimes he would keep practicing, especially if he really liked the song or he was just you know, in the groove, in the mood, and on a roll. And sometimes he would just be done, ready for the next mini break. You need a coach, a teacher, a trainer for everything you learn in life. And Nicholas's piano teachers were absolutely gems. Even today, let's say you don't have access to a piano teacher in your city or town or wherever you are. Maybe you have access to the internet. You can Google or watch a YouTube channel and learn how to play. Learning the piano not only made Nicholas a dedicated learner who literally heard his progression and the benefits of his hard work. It made him focus and he was able to learn how to read music, which is so fantastic. It provided him a true life sampling of how discipline is a benefit. Nicholas also benefited by fine tuning his motor skills and hand-eye coordination. Voila, a solid foundation was laid, but it wasn't overnight. It took time, patience, and perseverance. I'm also a firm believer that playing a musical instrument improves your cognitive abilities your skills, your memory, your spatial reasoning. It improves your science, your math, your engineering, technology, really. So why not encourage more creativity in the form of music at home, in the classroom, in the car? It's just such, so wonderful. Steinway, a piano company, speaks to this on their website briefly. They say that children who have had a few years of piano study under their belts could remember 20, 20% 20 more vocabulary words than their peers. I'd really like to see more of that study. And childhood musicians are better equipped later in life to retain information for speeches and lectures. Hmm. Regular music practice at an early age can even make structural changes to the brain that stay with you for the rest of your life. Making your brain more efficient. I would love to see a study that compared the 30 million word age gap 
that I spoke of in the episode called Talk Like an Adult. To see if the children from a lower economic family who played an instrument performed better than expected. Little thought thrown out to the universe there. If somebody's doing that study, please let me know. In preparing for today's episode, I read quite a bit of material on the benefits of music and more importantly, the correlation to math. It appears even today there is controversy in whether or not music improves math skills and, and vice versa. So I would think anything you do to improve cognitive ability spills over to other areas. Perhaps a universal example of this would be Leonardo da Vinci. He used to say, learning never exhausts the mind. Quite simply put, and a brilliant mind he was. I read articles by Dr. Francis Rauscher and Sean Hinton on the Mozart effect. I did not listen to Baby Einstein. I'm pretty sure no one can guarantee a child will be smarter simply by listening to a CD. I read Anderson Erickson's and Robert Poole's book called Peak. It discusses various research on how all of us can achieve extraordinary things. And they actually get into a little bit of debate in that book about Malcolm Gladwell's outliers thoughts. So again, everyone has different ideas. Everyone has different theories and, and that's okay. That's, that's great. So I'm not saying anyone's right or wrong. I'm just saying there's a lot of information out there. I would have to agree with Erickson that if anyone was taught to recognize a pitch four times a day for up to a year and a half, they would succeed. I would probably succeed because that's a huge time commitment. I would argue that becoming another Michael Jackson would prove far more difficult. However, one article did stand out more than others. Tom Jacobs wrote an article on September 2017 entitled, Want to be more creative? Try listening to Baroque music. I find Baroque very soothing as well. The reason it caught my attention is that Nicholas did a similar experiment for a science uh, club at school and took his research to a competition at the Arizona Science and Engineering Fair. I will speak further to the science fair competitions in future episodes as his findings were quite similar where participants proved more skillful at creating creative ideas while listening to a cheerful concerto in the background. Creativity is an important cognitive skill, and listening to music in various settings may make a difference. The type of music was what resonated with me most. Simone Ritter and Sam Ferguson conducted a study that measured divergent thinking, the ability to use one's imagination to come up with new concepts or combine old ones in unexpected, inventive ways. They also measured convergent thinking, the part of the creation process which all those crazy ideas are narrowed down to find the optimal solution to a problem. Without going into great detail, the results of the study found that in comparison to silence, there was an increase in divergent thinking when listening to Vivaldi. Convergent thinking was not affected significantly by background noise. So I thought that was quite interesting. The music inspired higher levels of fluency and flexibility, which stimulate original ideas. I love knowing that we are still in search of what's best for us. Nicholas's piano teachers did encourage classics in lesson planning. And on cold winter mornings, I like to put on classical music channel it's very soothing. He did receive a lot of flexibility though. 
They did allow him to pick genres that were of interest to him. And they even went so far. One of his teachers was open-minded so much that when Nicholas wanted to play the theme music from World of Warcraft, which was one of his favorite video games, she didn't hesitate. She said, bring it on. I want to hear this music. I don't know if they did this on purpose, but what they did do was pay attention to the music that Nicholas liked and encouraged him to bring to life the melodies in his mind. You know, when I put on the classical music in the morning and I'm humming to Vivaldi's Four Seasons, it just comes to me. I'm not pitch perfect, but I hum it. My do 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 do. It's just one of those things. So if Nicholas was thinking of a melody, even if it wasn't created yet, they would encourage him to write it down and play it. And it was actually, I think, what inspired him to start composing, actually. Have you ever listened to some of the music in video games? Turns out they're quite the score, meaning it would be absolutely fabulous on the big screen. But I have a feeling these action-packed cinematic creations probably get better exposure in a game. I love how Nicholas looked past the first layer and introduced his teacher to the music that made, made an impression on him. I would be remiss not to mention Albert Einstein and his inspiration for music. He, he has also a very good quote about that. Life without playing music is inconceivable for me. I found that on the Nobel Prize website, which reflects on the Symphony of Science. And they stayed on there. Music has often helped Nobel laureates think and process scientific information in a new way. Physics laureate Albert Einstein was influenced by his mother, who taught him to play the violin at a very early age. He was especially fond of Mozart, Bach, and Schubert. Einstein often highlighted and emphasized the importance of music to him. In his lifetime, he owned around 10 violins, all receiving the nickname of Lena. <laughs> That's kind of quirky. For Einstein, music worked as brainstorming technique to help him reflect on his theories and resolve difficulties he encountered. He often indicated that if he hadn't been working as a scientist, he would have become a musician. Einstein's scientific ideas were often firstly created in the shape of images and intuitions and later, uh, later converted into mathematics, logic, and words. Music helped Einstein in this thought process and helped convert the images to logic. So if music can work for Einstein and inspire his scientific research and his mathematics and his music playing was fantastic, 10 violins, I think it can work for the rest of us too. I'm gonna speak more to the importance of music in episodes because uh, as I mentioned earlier, Nicholas mastered a few instruments and found a kindred spirit in composition. So thank you, Nicholas, for the music, for the show. It's pitch perfect. Good, better, best, never let it rest. Tell your good is better and your better is best. That's a quote attributed to St. Jerome, of which I've heard quoted numerous times over the year. And I think it's quite relevant today for today's show, especially making the commitment to learning a musical instrument. But it's also relevant to doing anything. If you wanna be the best swimmer in the universe, just say that. If you wanna be the best parent you can be, it helps. Teachers, anybody, whatever your goal, that's a nice little phrase to keep in your mind. So thank you, my friends, for listening. I really appreciate you spending your time with me today. If you'd like to sponsor the show, support us, 
please visit the Flourish.mom website and click on the Patron link. I could really use some subscribers and some feedback as well. I need YouTube subscribers <laughs> desperately in order to get my own channel name, which would be so nice. We are all born with a gift. We are all born with purpose. Life's journey is to hone and develop that gift as purpose changes within. Live well, my friends. I'll see you next week.